and welcome to episode 52 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting, sewing, spinning, basically all of the fiber crafts that I feel like. And, well, knitting, sewing and spinning have been coming back to this podcast quite often. I think knitting has always been there. Not 100% sure about that, but I feel like that that's the most important one which is why it's called a knitting teaspoon <laughs> anyway so thank you so much for joining me you will have noticed that there was no episode last week i already mentioned in my previous podcast that we would be getting back on saturday last week and i somehow thought that we would be back home earlier than we actually were possibly due to the time shift like when we were flying to scotland the flight is about an hour and 20 minutes ish but you also set back the clock an hour so it feels like a 20 minute flight but on the way back home of course we have an extra hour that suddenly passed without you noticing it of course so we got home quite late and i was really really exhausted after our trip i don't know why i was that exhausted actually but my my brain just felt a bit dazed for a few days anyway so no podcast episode and you guys i feel a little bit overwhelmed by the pile of stuff that is like all around me here because usually i can't okay. i'm sitting on a bar stool um to record this podcast because then you will get a semi nice backdrop or at least i think this is an, a, a nice backdrop and um in front of me there's our other bar stool which i usually use to put on some stuff and then i have my desk left to me here and i sometimes need to put on some stuff there as well but now my desk is like fully covered there's an entire pile in front of me and right next to me i have a regular dining chair and yeah there's also stuff hanging and sitting on top of there so let's get right into it because i have a lot to share yeah so well let's start with what i've been doing because a lot of what I, what i have around me here is kind of purchases because i've been to scotland as i've mentioned before and some of that yeah well i will keep that for later if it's just a purchase and then i will just quickly show it and not spend too much time on it because i feel like you're mostly here for what i do and if i do something with the stuff that i just purchased then it will get back in the future so first of all I went to Scotland and I brought with me two projects to knit on, actually three or kind of four, but I don't know. I, I think I had the yarn with me to knit on four projects. So I had yarn with me for two pairs of socks and I had cast on my Mamelukker. So these are knitted shorts and they are finished now and it doesn't look like much, I, I think. Uh, it, they are very short shorts. Let's fold the, the ribbing over. I think you're supposed to wear it with the ribbing folded over like this anyway. So this kind of looks like shorts, possibly. They're quite see-through, as you may or may not be able to see. I can see through it quite easily because behind the camera there's a studio light. So for me, there's a light source behind the camera. For you guys, well, there's no... A light source behind me so you may not be able to see through it as easily but this is um, something that I intend to wear on very cold uh, winter days when I'm still wear wearing a skirt and my uh, tights as per usual okay I guess that motorcycle is gone now <laughs> there was someone making a lot of noise anyway so um, yeah uh, I intend to wear this over my tights uh, and underneath my skirt in uh, the winter time to just keep a little bit warmer when there's like snow outside or when it's freezing or very close to zero uh, degree temperatures. Zero degrees Celsius that is, I'm not really sure where the freezing point is in Fahrenheit. But Currently, we are experiencing a lovely bit of spring weather. It's sunny today. We don't have to put on the central heating because the sun is heating our house more than our central heating would. So that's very nice. And the trees in, in front of our house have been in full blossom when we got back from Scotland, which was lovely to see. When we got back, 
in Scotland it was a bit grey and dreary weather and it was like they predicted rain or more rain or slightly less rain for every day that we were there. It wasn't so bad actually, we hardly got wet from the rain but we did make sure to just bring raincoats and not regular coats for our trip. But it, it was grey skies all the time there and when we got back uh, immediately the day after it was a lovely spring day. It was sunny, it felt like spring, the trees in front of our house were in full blossom and it was lovely. Since then it's been raining and storming a lot so a lot of the blossoms on the trees are, are gone actually and I kind of regret not taking a photo the first day because now there's like this kind of pinkish uh, white snow going down from the trees which is just um, blossoms losing their leaves also it's, it's just lovely to see anyway and uh, the, the the fresh green on the trees is coming through and it really just makes me so happy to see how the plants return to yeah kind of being alive again anyway so i don't think I will be needing my mama liquor soon, but this was knit out of my hand spun. It was quite interesting to knit this because the pattern is in Swedish and I think she has an English translation, but I'm not really sure. The pattern is by Maya Carlson, I believe. I'm not even sure actually, I think it's yerbo.se, so it should be a Swedish pattern, but might be Norwegian. I don't really know how to tell them apart. I know there are some letters that are in the Swedish alphabet and not in the Norwegian, but I, I don't know. Anyway, so I knit this out of my hand spun yarn, which I purchased the fiber for on Oslo Strictly Festival, and I've spun this uh, quite recently. But I still have plenty left over, so I could easily get another pair of these shorts out of it, or maybe just knit something else with it. Uh, because I've had leftovers of hand spun before but not quite as much so yeah I feel like I should do something with the leftovers but I'm not quite sure what I should do with them yet. The leftovers are here so this is still a pretty decent amount I don't know exactly how much it weighs because I just didn't put it on scales yet but it should be quite a lot although two of my cakes they kind of turned out quite plump and wide and this one turned out a lot tighter so I'm not really sure if I'm happy to use this one as well so I intentionally took the two plumper ones with me to, to knit this these shorts from. Anyway I'm taking a lot of time just to, to talk about this one pattern. Um, it was quite of a disaster here because you kind of for the, the crotch very pretty showing you uh, like this but um, you, you kind of knit a flap from one side and knit to the other side and then you have to kitchener stitch it together on the other side. I'm not really sure what the pattern recommended for it, but I did not have a darning needle with me on my trip to Scotland. I actually got to the point that I needed to connect the front and the back before I could pick up the stitches for, for the very short leg section. While we were on a coach trip through Scotland, so through the Highlands and uh, along Loch Ness and uh, visit Glencoe and Inverness and a uh, beautiful uh, trip, but there was a lot of time that we were just sitting in the coach and uh, I can sit and knit and watch the outside perfectly fine at the same time. So uh, it happened on this trip that I had to kitchener it. I did not have a darning needle with me, not, not to Scotland and definitely not on that trip. But I did have two sets of knitting needles with me. So I kind of kitchenered with like an additional uh, needle from in another size to, to kind of pull the yarn through every time and I had made a mistake. So initially I had, well, a kitchener two stitches together to, to one. So it, uh, in the end my stitch count didn't quite match up. So I had to do the same thing but in the opposite way to make sure that it would connect so that I could continue knitting because I wasn't going back because it was really tedious doing it that way but when I got back home and it was actually all finished I just took out the row that I had kitchener it together just popped in the needles again and kitchener it again but now somewhat more evenly and uh, I, yeah I'm happy that I did that and it's all finished uh, 
moving in the ends and everything so I'm quite pleased with the, how this turned out now uh, just wait for the weather to, to actually start using it anyway that's one project out of the way so let's put it aside so then there has been another project that I've been knitting on and while uh, we were in Scotland the first day when we got there you went to Glasgow and in Glasgow uh, there is this lovely shop called the Yarn Cake uh, very close to 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 the botanical gardens there and they uh, sell yarn and cake so uh, my boyfriend was like oh do you need to drag me to a yarn shop right away but then I told him uh, they would be selling tea and coffee and uh, and some cake so that uh, won him over so we could go to a yarn shop and it was actually one of the highlights of our of our trips to, to just go and sit in it there but um, yeah, I asked him to pick some sock yarn from the shop and well, the shop is very tiny uh, and did not have a, a like a huge selection of yarns, but what they had was really nice and re or really decent commercial yarns, but they also had some indie dyed yarns and I asked him to pick out a skein to knit socks for him and as long term viewers of this podcast may know, the majority of socks that I've knit for him at least involve some bit of navy blue but he said no I want to try something diff different I want red socks or green socks or maybe even orange so uh, I asked him to pick out some sock yarn and he picked out this color so this is a hand tight skein by Mossy and the Squid and it is, I think, 85% uh, merino yarn and 15% donegal naps. So it said, well, I'm not sure if it said on the label, but I think on online it said that it was a sock yarn. So, and he really wanted socks out of these. And I was like, not sure if I wanted to make him socks without any nylon content. Um, I would be fine knitting socks for, for me without nylon content, but my boyfriend tends to wear through his socks a bit faster than I do so somehow he's harder on his socks than I am so I thought if I can just combine it with some black sock yarn it would be fine so uh, I started knitting on this uh, after we got home by the way so I kicked up this skein with my wool winder and uh, yeah I started knitting so I have a black toe which is Quite basic and then uh, it's striping up lovely and there's a stitch marker here which is just marking I think the point where I hit 50 rows because I'm a person who counts rows in their sock yarn I actually am knitting this sock on tighter needles than usual with a few more stitches than I usually would for my boyfriend because I feel like if there's no nylon then at least I need to do something to make sure that these socks are gonna hold up a little bit longer so that's what I did and I intend to use the same black I think it's just some I'm, I'm not even sure what the brand is but uh, just some plain black sock yarn that I just happen to have in my stash so um, I intend to use that for the heels and possibly the cuffs as well not, not sure if I will use it for the cuffs we'll see but uh, yeah, it's turning out beautifully. And I think this colorway is called Orange Under Wing. And I think that's like a butterfly reference. So uh, yeah, it's, it, I think it's turning out beautiful. But very much out of my boyfriend's comfort zone. And he had already been asking for red socks. So that's also what my, my other project for him is. And I was knitting this, I started knitting this on the the Wednesday of our trip and um, yeah I actually started knitting on the one sock out of this pair that you can't see because I was knitting these socks on bamboo needles and it was kind of a disaster because I usually knit him socks on metal needles on, uh, on US zero or two millimeter uh, needle uh, and then I need 68 stitches for him and I was going to knit this on uh, bamboo needles because I wanted to be able to uh, knit on it during our flight as well and for safety reasons I thought let's just bring uh, bamboo needles instead of metal needles 
but I knew from past experience that I need somewhat looser on bamboo needles so I decreased the stitch count to 66 hoping that would be enough of a compensation because I didn't want to go down too much but the first sock really turned out big and then I wasn't really happy with that but I just continued knitting uh, the second sock and the second sock got a lot tighter than the first one so here's the second sock um, but when I got back home and I finished the, the second sock uh, just after we got back home um, I had my boyfriend try on both socks and uh, the first sock really was too loose for him so I got my act together and ripped out the entire sock and started knitting over and I just finished the first sock again or the third sock of the pair I don't know how you want to count this but uh, I still have to need uh, the stitch markers in here just to count to make sure that I have the same number of rows on both socks for some reason there are 71 rows I don't know why bit of an odd number but you know and still you can notice that uh, I started knitting tighter yet again with these needles so but I think these are both in in the wearable range uh, for my boyfriend now so I think this is gonna be fine but oh my <laughs> it was a bit of a disaster I, I really did not like knitting this sock again now I typically don't have any problems with knitting a second sock but knitting a sock the second so time which is going to be the exact same sock so like knitting the three socks in a, in a pair, that's too much. So I don't know. I'm really glad that they're done now and um, I still need to weave in the ends, but for now I'm just going to work on projects that I enjoy a little bit better than this project. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of a knitting fail. Anyway, I think that's all of the knitting projects that I've been working on, but I have not only been missing. On Thursday I visited Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Unfortunately I didn't get to meet any of the viewers that said that they were going so we happened to miss each other. It was a very big event so obviously that can happen. In future cases I may need to think of staying connected or communicating a bit better. If there's a time and place where we can meet up, I don't know. Anyway. It was a lovely day uh, still though and we met a lot of new people that uh, I didn't know where we're going so it, it was a lovely day anyway but I would have liked to meet some of the viewers but uh, yeah we spent a lot of time uh, walking down the marketplace my boyfriend was there too we just walked across the marketplace and there were some some lovely things to see but my first purchase was made at West Blown and West Blown is a or they had a stand where they sold weaving equipment and uh, possibly also spinning equipment but I wasn't really looking at the spinning equipment because I was looking for a shuttle for my band weaving and I found one and so I purchased two because I thought it would be nice and you can obviously see that this one is in use and I will get to that in a second. Uh, but uh, yeah I managed to purchase uh, a uh, a shuttle so that meant that I could go on and weave some so when I got back home I uh, warped my little rigid heddle that I purchased in Oslo a few years ago and I took my little book that I got for my birthday so the Sami uh, band weaving booklet and uh, I uh, I looked at the instructions for how to warp uh, the rigid heddle and I did and I started with this project and initially oh, here's the band that I've woven it's not perfect uh, I'm just a beginner I, I don't know what I'm doing really so uh, yeah I, I started here and there was this pattern in the book and it looked very nice and I thought I can do that uh, but I had warped the thing not realizing that it would really take up 
all of the light blue yarn that I have here. So I do have other light blue uh, cotton yarns. This is just some crochet cotton that I happen to have in my stash. And this blue one was a really, really tiny mini skein type of thing. I don't know if it's, it was five or 10 grams, maybe, I don't know. But I warped it and I accidentally warped it wrong because there's like two threads between all the white ones here. Like in, in this direction, there there's two blue ones between the white. And at one point I put it, accidentally put in four, but I ac actually run out of yarn already just on the warp. So I couldn't use it for weft anymore. And the pattern actually called for the same color as she uses, as what I have used in blue for the weft as well. So, and the weft is the yarn that goes horizontally through it's through your weaving, through the warp threads. I don't know. Anyway, so I I started trying to do the pattern, but I felt like it doesn't turn out like what I wanted to turn out like, and I thought it was kind of tedious to pick up and drop pattern yarns, and I wasn't sure if I was doing it correctly, or and also not if it would show up correctly because I was not using the right color of of weft yarn. So I thought. Well, let's just forget about that and just weave back and forth without caring too much about a pattern. And you can really see that it's not quite even and <laughs> you're definitely got a bit tighter. And then somewhere around here, I figured out how I could make the edges look nice on both sides. It's still not perfect, but it got a lot better. So it was really nice to see that uh, my weaving definitely improved. Uh, with the distance that I made and I also looked up in a, a tutorial on how to finish uh, your weaving. I'm not really sure if this is how I want to keep it but this could be really usable. I thought this might be nice to make like handles for project bags or something so yeah uh, I, I'm really intending to to go on and weave a bit more so I went to my local yarn shop and this, this all happened when I was back in the Netherlands by the way and picked up well, a bunch of colors. So a bit of crochet cotton and it's Schipjes uh, Lara. So um, here's the label of one of them here. And their colorways are all numbers and I'm not gonna remember them, but it's basically a rainbow with, with some light blue yarn extra just for the background color because I, I thought this would be nice to just have the white replaced by rainbow colors and just have something stripey. So I did that and I also changed the weft color to the background color. And here is my, I think I started on the other end, I'm not sure. So I've been weaving a rainbow belt since and I think it turned out lovely and I'm not really sure what I could use this for. And I ran out of weft yarn at some point, uh, but I just replaced it and that some ends. I don't know how I'm going to finish this, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this uh, piece of band. I'm not, not sure. I think it would be lovely to have it as a strap for, for a bag or something, or maybe for a smaller bag, because it feels quite sturdy. I mean, it's, it's woven cotton, so yeah, I, I think most of you will at least at some point in your life have felt woven cotton and it feels quite sturdy so I think this could be really useful in making project bags and I'm going to experiment a lot I guess with um, all the different types of uh, of colors and constructions and things that you can do with weaving um, and also with trying to get my attention a bit more even but I think it's okay for a beginner I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with this so uh, yeah, so this is also going in my basket of, I put the laundry basket down here uh, just for all the projects that I want to get out of my way. <laughs> anyway, so we went on over the marketplace and my boyfriend was still into this mood of uh, getting out of his comfort zone. So I also picked up some yarn for him. Oops, let's get all those other skeins out of the way too. We'll give me a bit of a feeling that there's more space. Anyway, so he was still about stepping out of his comfort zone. And so we came across this 
stand where they sold this dijupin. Uh, dijupin. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Uh, Scottish lamb's wool. Uh, so I bought two skeins to make him a colorwork hat at some point. He picked the colors actually. I think this is going to be uh, beautiful and, and very soft. This, this yarn is so incredibly soft, but I think it will be good for colorwork. Anyway. So soft against the face. Uh, I'm going to knit him a colorwork hat at some point. Anyway, but the majority of my budget really went to a stand called uh, Spin City. So I saw their, their stand and I knew that this is the place where I'm going to spend the majority of my budget. So I, at first we walked past it and we browsed the rest of the marketplace and... Whoop, but we got back <laughs> and um, lovely Louise of Spin City, she taught me how to use a drop spindle. So I purchased a drop spindle there and apparently it's real flowers that she somehow managed to get into this thing. And um, I have, well, she taught me how to uh, use a drop spindle on a spindle that was very similar to, to this one, at least in size and uh, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I thought it spun like a dream. So I wanted to purchase one. Now, I'm not a big fan of glitter, so I did not purchase this spindle for the looks. I purchased it because I like the feel of it when I was spinning with it. And I have since been spinning a little bit. So the lovely thing about buying a spindle is that they can be transported by airplane uh, much easier than spinning wheels. Uh, even in our big suitcase, which wasn't carry-on luggage, I don't think we could have fit my, my spinning wheel. But this way I could still spin a little bit in the hotel. After the festival I started spinning and ever since I've been just taking a little bit of the bed and, that I purchased there and uh, been spinning a little. So I purchased this bed and you, you can't really see all of the colors because you wrap around it all the time. But these are the colors and I think it's, I think in her shop she calls it something like Comet or Meteorite or something, but it's really a beautiful bed and there's different kinds of fiber and there's a bit of sparkle in the dark blue section or at least mostly in the dark blue section and I feel like this gray might even be undyed gray wool and there's some full cashmere in here. I, I'm not really sure what all the fibers are but this just looked nice and I was spinning with the same type of fiber that um, when uh, Louise taught me how to spin with the drop spindle so I wanted to purchase something that was the same and these are just colors that you well, if you've been watching this podcast for longer, then you will know that my boyfriend and I really enjoy our blues and our grays. So this one had to come home with us. Uh, that is not all of the damage that I did at that stand because I I thought I wanted to support Spin City a little bit more. So I wanted to sponsor uh, a bit more or actually just buy more fiber because it's not easy to find for me and she had this rainbow braid and who can resist a rainbow <laughs> i can't so uh yeah i'm and this is a merino nylon uh roving so uh yeah I, i'm going to try and spin for more socks because i have really been enjoying knitting socks from my hand spun even though it's only been one pair so far and the yarn turned out quite a bit thicker than i was intending it to but I'm, I'm just gonna try again and at some point I will be able to spin uh, yarns like commercial yarns, I guess. I hope someday, maybe. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I thought a rainbow is just lovely. I'm, I'm gonna love that. So uh, I'm gonna try again for in spinning for socks. And this braid is also going in the laundry bag. Three of these braids of fiber. Are I think it's called roving or top and this is tea's water and I have three in the same color and I'm hoping to spin enough to make me some kind of top or vest or or shirt or whatever out of this and uh, yeah tea's water is also a breed that I've never been spinning with before so 
uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to try. And then there's some more, which also happened at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, there was also this stand, by, uh, which was, I think, called Wensley Dale Long Wool. And this is, you can guess three times what kind of fiber this is. It's Wensley Dale. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but it's just a natural color and um, it's 500 grams which should definitely be enough for me to knit a sweater and I have some ideas for making it a lovely cabled kind of sweater and oh, this feels so soft and, and drapey so I'm really curious what what is this going to turn out like but I, I'm really curious to start spinning with this and I'm also quite happy that I've been kind of purchasing fiber consciously enough. Like I have at least two sweater quantities. So I really like that, especially with fiber. I feel like if you're purchasing like sock yarn or something, you, you may need like three, four, five, maybe even more skeins of, of yarn for knitting a sweater. And it's typically possible to find um, enough skeins to, to make you something but with spinning fiber it's it's a bit trickier because I feel like in many stands that I've been they kind of tend to sell 100 gram one of kind uh, fiber bats or rovings and of course you can combine different types of roving and make your own combination and something but I feel like especially with hand dyed stuff that's not really the point I buy because I love the colors and I, I feel like and then all the colors should be in there <laughs> like I don't need to go and combine it with other stuff anyway that's just my thoughts uh, on that but I'm, I'm really happy that I found a sweater in quantity uh, at two stands so uh, that's not all the damage that I did oh, I, I've been bad you guys I've been terrible um, in Glasgow at the yarn cake they also sold bit smaller bits of fiber and I don't even know how much this weighs so I'm really not sure how much it is but I've picked up uh, two of these nice and tealy colored uh, bits of roving I think it's a merino nylon but I'm not really sure and um, there's a gray one as well so I'm hoping to combine these three and spin something out of it uh, but I feel like this is not going to be very heavy so it's unlikely that this will be enough to knit me a sweater and uh, I feel it's just a bit tricky if you have tiny amounts of fiber and especially if you can't spin very thin and that might be entirely due to your skill um, uh, at least in my <laughs> my opinion in my skill uh, it's, it's not that great at spinning them to exactly the weight that I want my yarns to turn out like um, yeah, it, it kind of limits what you can make out of your projects. I feel like I would end up needing a lot of hats out of hand spun simply because I don't have enough yarn to really make something else. And that's just a bit sad. But I'm, I'm really happy with these colors. And because they are more of a solid color, at least these ones are, this one is a bit, bit variegated. I hope there's not too bad reflections on, on here. But anyway, because they are solid colors, they might be easier to combine with other stuff. Whew. Yeah. Oh, uh, I completely forgot at the Weft Loan Shop, I also purchased a new set of card weaving, tablet weaving cards. So I can try that as well. Uh, while I still have the other bit of uh, card woven stuff on the cards, so that might help me figure out how to work this anyway so here it is Yay. I really don't know how to work with something like this so I just continued weaving on and I think that I already have but these cards seem to be a lot nicer than the ones that I have simply because they have like uh, letters in all the corners and the sides are also marked so you can kind of see if you have them all in the same position or not I'm not going to take them out of the plastic right now but it, it seems like an, a nice tool to have anyway that's that at edinburgh yarn festival i uh, purchased one more skein of sock yarn and it was this skein uh, in the twin peaks colorway um, by house of a la mode 
and uh, yeah, I think this may be the most expensive uh, sock yarn that I've ever purchased, but my boyfriend loved it and he wanted me to knit socks out of this, so he's going to have it. And he saw the price tag on this uh, skein of yarn and he thought, well, that's expensive, I should contribute to your yarn purchases. Yeah, I kind of like that. Please do sponsor me to knit for you, because so far all of the yarn all of the things that I've knit for him. Uh, I've purchased the yarn except for the one skein that he purchased in Greece. I've never seen a bill for, for the yarn uh, there, but I don't mind him sponsoring me purchasing more yarn. That was an interesting turn of events. I, I didn't know uh, that would happen if I bought more expensive yarns. <laughs> anyway, I don't think I will purchase m m many more skeins that are this expensive because honestly, I don't, I feel like this one was maybe a bit too expensive for my liking. I don't know. And especially, like, it's a beautiful color, don't get me wrong, and it, it definitely takes some skill to make something this pretty, and it's probably on a very nice base. I think it's just a merino nylon, but um, A20 high twist merino, I think it feels very similar actually to the yarn that I had in my a uh, cardigan, the Dussala cardigan, the, the pink one that I think I was wearing on last episode or maybe the week be before that, I'm not really sure, but um, I made this peachy cardigan from Lily Pond Yarns and it feels quite similar and it, it really feels luxurious, but honestly I feel like a color like this I might somehow be able to to dye up myself. I'm totally not sure if I actually can, but like if it was crazy speckled or something very intricate that I I know I would not be able to make myself, then maybe I would spend this much on, on the skein of sock yarn, but I think this is a bit, maybe a bit too expensive, I don't know. Anyway, I haven't even told you how much it, it cost, but it was close to 30 pounds, which I think is expensive for just one skein of sock yarn. Anyway, <sighs> but I love it. So I think that's all of the yarn, pr no, that's not all of the yarn purchased, because I purchased more. I actually did not purchase that much, I, f I feel like. I only purchased six skeins of yarn. I just happened to buy a lot of fiber as well, and some s weaving material and spinning equipment. And um, yeah, we'll get to what else I purchased in Scotland. So. The day after Edinburgh Yarn Festival, or actually the festival was still going on, but we only went on the Thursday because I felt like dragging my boyfriend along to more days of the Yarn Festival might be just a bit too much for him. We also wanted to see something of Edinburgh, but I did drag him along to uh, Catty Snit, which is a, a yarn shop in Edinburgh, and uh, I purchased these games of there I think it's Shetland yarn yes unique Shetland yarn JC Rennie and Co nothing super special I think but my boyfriend really liked these colors and he wants some fingerless mitts out of them so you may have noticed that I have not actually bought any yarn to knit anything for myself out of so um, I feel like I was quite generous in that sense uh, all of the spinning fibers for me I feel like if I put in so much effort to spin something first and then knit it or crochet or whatever technique I'm going to use, maybe I will use some hand spun for, uh, for weaving at some point, I don't know, then it's going to be a project for me. But uh, yeah, here is uh, my lovely uh, set of JC Rennie yarns. And I feel like this is very much the same yarn as um, how do you call it? Holst super soft yarn. It also seems to have about the same yardage as it, but this just feels soft. It, this has already been washed, and I know that Holst super soft still has a lot of spinning oil in it, and this doesn't. So, yeah, or it it feels a lot nicer at least. Might still be some in there. I, I don't know. I have never tried knitting with it yet. But it feels very nice. But when I was at a Cathy's Knits, they had quite an overwhelming selection of yarn. Like it was not 
like it had that much yarn I feel like but the yarn that they had was really really nice so <laughs> it was difficult to pick some from it anyway but they also had a little show in the back room so they have a, a classroom in the back and they sold this book by Lucy Haig there and I think Lucy was supposed to be there but she was ill and this seemed like an interesting technique of doing some kind of cable texture kind of things um, and I saw some of those works and on the on, on the back side there's some more images of this uh, yeah this type of knitting and I, I liked it so I thought let's just bring back a book because a book sounds like a smart choice then we were headed into Edinburgh, more towards the castle. Um, we also went to a, a game store and a bookshop for my boyfriend. So don't worry, he got he got a bit of uh, his as well. Um, I'm not even sure if he had some whiskey there, but uh, he definitely tried some Scottish uh, beers, I'm sure. Anyway, I don't drink myself. So, uh, But we also went to the tartan weaving mill and it's very close to the castle if you've been to Edinburgh you might know where, where it is but there's this four-story tartan weaving mill right in the middle of Edinburgh and they make all these tartans and they sell a lot of products made out of these tartans but you can also just buy the tartan and as you know I like sewing so I just purchased me some two meters which is slightly over two yards of fabric to make me a dress or a skirt or something in this lovely grey tartan. I think this tartan is called a grey thistle, which sounds very Scottish, <laughs> I feel like, but I just love it. It's nice and neutral, so I'm pretty sure that if I make something out of this, that I will wear it a lot. <sighs> if I ever get to making something out of it, because I feel like about a year ago I purchased some tartan from a sewing shop close by and I never actually got around to doing anything with it so but it feels like it's because the fabric is just too precious to do something with but this fabric was way more expensive than the Dutch fabric so I may use my Dutch tartan first as kind of a practice piece to make me a skirt and then make a lovely one out of this grey neutral fabric <sighs> It feels so incredibly soft. It's 100% wool and I love it. <sighs> Almost got through all that I have to share with you, but there is more because just before I left for Scotland, I have been dyeing some more and um, I tried to dye a red and an orange. It kind of turned out like twice an orange. Um, and let's start with this one first. Uh, yeah, this was supposed to be red. It's not really red. But I really love how it turned out. It's it's a very nice tone of well rusty orange brown. But yeah, I, I quite like this. Kind of wish my hair was more this color. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, uh, I, I'm quite happy with how this turned out, even though it's not at all what I wanted it to turn out like uh, when I started dyeing it. But I'm quite happy with this. And this yarn... Well, it turned out a very bright orange and I didn't like it so I tried to tone it down a bit and I did at some spots but it's very uneven and I, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might over dye it again, I'm not really sure. Maybe in a very light grey dye bath. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yarn because I don't like it like this. Anyway, <laughs> there's been one more dyeing adventure. And it's more natural dyeing because, I, as I mentioned before, I have had another bouquet of rose, uh, roses and therefore rose petals for my birthday. And they were like a corally pink kind of roses. So I wanted to try and dye some yarn with this. And this is the rose petal yarn that I dyed with previously. It turned out a bit more yellowish than uh, the other yarn. But I've made a terrible mistake with this. So I've read somewhere that I need cream of tartar uh, for for dyeing with rose petals. So I thought I found some in the supermarket, but it kind of was cream of tartar with cornstarch. 
and you guys don't put cornstarch in your uh, boiling pot for for dyeing yarn because now like this it, it will stand up like this it won't drop down it, it's really stiff um, I'm not really sure to what extent it shows there is still some kind of rape to it but it, it doesn't feel like yarn anymore it feels like rope <laughs> it's terrible I heard from one lady at my local knit group that I can try to to bathe it in a lot of water to kind of soak as much of it out of the yarn so maybe after I take a hot bath just put in the, the yarn after I'm done bathing myself and just try to get out as much cornstarch as I can but this yarn I don't know how many times I've washed it already but it still feels stiff and not very nice so yeah if you ever want to try dyeing with natural uh, stuff don't use cornstarch in it at least unless you want something to, to feel very ropey maybe it's nice if you like make a bag or something it, it actually could have some use hmm, never thought of that anyway <sighs> It was kind of a dying failure. Underneath my uh, pile of other projects, I found uh, another project that I've been working on, and it's my fishy socks that I have been working on after I got back. And uh, I am on the heel now, so I'm about to try on these socks and see if they fit. Uh, as you can see, I have a much larger gusset in here than I had on my previous sock, which I have not yet ripped out. I still have it here. Um, yeah, so you can compare this colorwork bit to this bit. So I'm hoping this is going to be enough to make it fit. I'm also trying to do something different in the in the uh, short row heel here to actually increase a few stitches while turning for a heel. I'm not really sure what that's gonna going to turn out like, but I'm hoping that it will work and that I can uh, wear this sock. So I still have the pattern, but I'm not really in love with the project anymore. <laughs> after after getting this far and loving it so much, and then it just not fitting. That was just such a disappointment. Anyway, uh, I hope it will fit after this heel but now at least I will find out a lot sooner than on the other sock <sighs> I feel like I've been talking for ages and my voice uh, needs a break and I also need to somehow edit it, this before I leave for uh, a family birthday this weekend so uh, I, sh I don't think I mentioned this before but I'm recording this a day early because it's a Friday uh, and I usually record and edit on Saturdays but uh, as I have a birthday tomorrow I'm doing it a day early and I feel like I had enough to talk about. <laughs> I had so much to talk about. Oh my, this is going to be an editing nightmare. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little show and I, I know it was a bit all over the place because I feel like I can organize myself, but I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope you guys had a lovely a few weeks and that you will have a lovely week and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!